staff in every single city department, and we have a great citizenry that works working together will move us in the right direction in all of these areas. But tonight I focus on the issue of homelessness, not simply because it's of personal interest to me, but because it's one of the most challenging, vexing, and divisive issues in our community. Homelessness is not just the concern of homeless activists. It's concern of business people, neighborhood residents, conservationists, public safety officials, health workers, social service providers, compassionate young people, and members of many faith communities. Since almost every member of our community is in one or more of those groups, it's clearly an important issue for lots of people. And there's one other group that it concerns more than any of those groups that I just named, and that's the group consisting of the people who are experiencing homelessness right now in our community. It's impacting these people every hour of every day and every night. For the rest of us, homelessness can be an annoyance or a periodic impediment to business or something unpleasant or disturbing we see from time to time or a problem we have to deal with in our work. But the rest of us still have a place to go every night where we can shut the door, climb into a, dry, a reasonably comfortable bed, go to the refrigerator for a snack, stay warm and dry. Now I invite you to consider, take a moment to consider who's homeless in our community. Some are young children still hanging in there with their parents. Some are teens who were driven out of abusive homes. Some are women forced to leave their homes because of, of an abusive partner. Some are veterans who never fully bounced back from the trauma of war. Some are folks with serious mental health issues who've fallen through some pretty big cracks in our mental health care system. And some are those scruffy looking guys you see hanging out in various places around the community. I want to invite you to consider more carefully this scruffy looking guy who many quickly label a worthless bum who's getting some free soup and perhaps drinking in a park and sleeping under a bridge. This is the guy some would say is homeless by choice. Perhaps a more accurate description would be this is a guy who is homeless in part because he made some bad choices. I don't think he woke up one day in his apartment and said to himself, I think I'll go out and be homeless today. It's, like, it's likely he made some poor choices related to substance abuse and those contributed to his homelessness. It's equally likely that he lost a decent job he had in a downsizing industry or had a serious illness that used up all his resources. Both, but what is mo most likely of all, is that, that it was a combination of both poor choices and circumstances beyond his control. Another thing about this scruffy looking guy, he's also the guy I've heard some people in the community characterize as living an easy life. I'd like to talk about the, that typical guy li living that so-called easy life. Every time he wants to eat, he stands in a long line to eat off a cafeteria tray, or he stands on the street and, and waits for someone to act with generosity, or he pulls something out of a trash can, or he opens a can of something cheap. Every time he needs to go to the bathroom, he goes to a public toilet, or a bush, or an alley. When he seeks a bed to sleep in, he often lingers on a waiting list for weeks just to get a dorm bed for a brief period before his time to stay runs out. Every time he goes to sleep outside at night, he knows he's potentially exposed to both a citation and to the predators that prey on vulnerable people. He can't go inside and shut the door. Every time it rains, he finds a place under an overhang, pulls a plastic tarp over himself, or crawls into an old tent. When he's soaked to the bone, he doesn't have anywhere to go to dry off. He has nowhere secure to keep all his belongings except in the bag or on his back or in his hand. If he wants a shower, he waits in line for a long time, then showers with only a minimal sense of privacy. Everywhere he goes, a lot of people either scowl at him or look the other way just because he appears to be homeless. When he needs money, he stands near a parking lot driveway with a sign for hours to come up with 20 or 30 bucks or maybe nothing. When he drinks too much, he passes out on the ground or on a bench. He doesn't have a living room couch. 
When he cries, he does it in public because he has no private house or apartment or room to go to. When he has a serious health issue, it's more likely to be fatal since the life expectancy of a homeless person in our society is about 30 years shorter than for housed people. This is the so-called easy life of a person living on the street. So I respectfully request that we reconsider assumptions about that easy life of a homeless person and have a more serious conversation about the realities of homelessness. Life on the street almost always sucks, even if there is some free food. And we do not have to admire the person living on the street or even feel particularly sympathetic to recognize that his life is very difficult. Now that I've said this, I know some people will start to tune me out. Don is just a bleeding heart intent on making it easy for freeloaders. They tell me all we need to do is make those people go away. This is a surprisingly common suggestion in a community that prides itself on understanding sustainability. When we think about all the stuff we say we are throwing away or flushing away or washing away, we all know there is no actual place called away. The stuff we say we are throwing away is in a landfill right here in our community. The stuff we're flushing away is ending up in the ocean right on our front doorstep. The stuff we are washing away is flowing right into our local waterways. There is no away. When it comes to people, it works the same way. Pushing people away doesn't mean they disappear. It means they move some distance, maybe a few blocks, maybe a few miles away, maybe a few city, cities away. They still exist, and if they were homeless when they were pushed away, they'll still be homeless. Some hear this and say, aha, at least if we push them a few cities away, we won't have to deal with them or see them. That's a nice try, but we don't live in a vacuum. Those other cities, having adopted this same approach, will be pushing homeless people away too, and some of the ones they push away will end up here. So we have to stop this pointless and unproductive vicious cycle and get serious. What does seri getting serious look like? This is where I hope I might surprise a few people. I know getting serious about homelessness also means recognizing the challenges to the rest of the community of having hundreds of people living on the street. Homelessness does harm business. Seeing homelessness does make people, some people, afraid or uneasy. Homelessness does cost our community money. And homelessness has caused physical and environmental damage to many public and private places. So this isn't a plea to do what advocates of, simply do what advocates of homeless services and programs want. Tonight I'm not proposing new services or new programs or new laws. I know I'm not going to solve the problem of homelessness by proposing one new program or new law. And neither is any other individual in this community. For me, getting serious about the problem of homelessness means engaging the entire community in addressing this problem. Lord knows it's time. For 30, the 35 years I've been... Oh, sorry. Involved in public life in Santa Cruz, homelessness has been one of our top controversies and top challenges year in and year out. Yet somehow local government and local community members rarely seem to have the will to come together to air the issues out, discuss practical proposals,